has been a chaotic few weeks at the U.S. Capitol as Congress worked to avoid a government shutdown and now the House of Representatives has voted out its leadership. I'm Stephanie Haney and in this edition of In the News Now, we're looking into Republican Representative Kevin McCarthy being ousted as House Speaker as well as what comes next for Congress. McCarthy was etched into history books on Tuesday, October 3rd, becoming the first speaker to be voted out of the position by his fellow representatives. The historic 216 to 210 vote was forced by a group of hard right conservatives that were fed up with McCarthy's leadership. Eight Republicans, led by Florida Congress member Matt Gates and all Democrats who were present in the House at the time of the vote, voted to remove McCarthy as House Speaker. This has never happened before in U.S. history. Chris Thomas breaks down how this happened. The Office of Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. What brought us to this point? A revolt of a small handful of conservative rebels. Outraged that Kevin McCarthy cut a last minute bipartisan deal with House Democrats and 125 House Republicans to temporarily prevent a government shutdown. At the end of the day, keeping government open and paying our troops was the right decision. I stand by that decision. And then the day, if I have to lose my job over it, so be it. The move was led by Florida Republican Representative Matt Gates and backed by just a handful of eight far-right Republicans. Eight people do not represent the base. The eight people do not represent the entire GOP. This is about somebody that's in a safe district that, um, that is, you know, taking the American people for a ride. Former California GOP congressional candidate Tamika Hamilton just got back from the state GOP convention. She notes with a thin Republican majority, McCarthy took several steps to win the support of that small group of hardliners. One of those concessions was agreeing that a single Republican lawmaker could call a vote to remove the speaker. Congressman Matt Gates of Florida did just that. And he has failed to take a stand where it matters. So if he won't, I will. It's hard for me to believe that when he's under investigation with the House Ethics Committee and it comes at a time where he had felt that, you know, Speaker McCarthy didn't do all he could to support him. So, you know, and if this was truly about, you know, spending or ideology, again, you would have the Freedom Caucus standing behind him. There would have been a person waiting in the wings to take this position. Um, and that did not happen. Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries declaring it's now the responsibility of the GOP members to end the House Republican civil war. The reality is, the Democrats want to govern. Congressman John Garamendi says the historic vote to oust Speaker Kevin McCarthy is just the latest sign Republicans aren't interested in governing. The, the chaos caucus, the Republicans have been just in chaos for the last nine months. And today was the culmination of that chaotic situation in which they could not agree on who ought to be their speaker. They had a revolt. Now, Representative Patrick McHenry of North Carolina will serve as Speaker Pro Tem until a new Speaker election can take place. Or maybe five or six Republicans will decide to work with the Democrats and we'll create some sort of a coalition of government here in the House of Representatives. That's a very, very long shot. Tuesday night, McCarthy said he will not run for the speakership again. And until there's another speaker, the work of the House is basically halted with another threat of a government shutdown looming. The timing of this vote is not ideal as Congress still needs to pass a budget by November 17th in order to avoid a government shutdown. But now the House needs to vote on a new speaker before that can happen. The House's historic vote is garnering a reaction from all over the country. Morgan Wolf spoke with Minnesota lawmakers about McCarthy's removal and its impact. Sometimes you have to sacrifice a great deal to gain something. Nothing was gained here. There was no policy thing or anything that was gained by the but the people that ousted Speaker McCarthy's. Harsh criticism for the party that former U.S. Representative Vin Weber from Minnesota used to work with on Capitol Hill. A totally destructive action that had no winners, except maybe in a small way, the Democrats. What's next for the House? Quickly after the vote today, Patrick McHenry, a Republican from North Carolina, was named the interim speaker, but he can't bring legislation to the floor or take it off. It is civil war within the Republican Party. U of M professor Larry Jacobs believes this division has opened the door for U.S. Representative Tom Emmer from Minnesota to become the next speaker, a position that's never been held by a Minnesota representative before. 
Tom Emmer said he doesn't want it, which is a good strategy for getting it. Emmer, whose majority whip, is already in a leadership position. He also is quite conservative and has won the support of many of those eight. If he had come out and challenged Speaker McCarthy from the beginning, he would have lost respect from the large number of Republicans who do support Speaker McCarthy. Republicans say it was only a matter of time before McCarthy, who only won support as Speaker after 15 rounds of voting, was outed. Former Rep Weber believes that the Republican Party will unite behind a new Speaker. But I think they'll go first to Scalise, he has right of first refusal, and then to Tom Emmer, he has the right of second refusal. McCarthy has told lawmakers that he will not run for speaker again and that he will consider endorsing a successor. Here are some of his remarks following the vote to remove him. You need 218. Unfortunately, 4% of our conference can join all the Democrats and dictate who can be the Republican speaker in this House. I don't think that rule is good for the institution, but apparently I'm the only one. I believe I can continue to fight, maybe in a different manner. I will not run for speaker again. I'll have the conference pick somebody else. Saturday, I took a risk for the American public. Regardless what anybody says, no one knew whether that would pass. The Democrats didn't want that bill. Yes, they pull a fire alarm. Yes, they do their conga line. Yes, they wanted to delay but it was all for the American people. I could not look the troops in the eye and say I would not pay them. Look, you all know Matt Gates. You know it was personal. It had nothing to do about spending. It had nothing to do about everything he accused somebody of he was doing. It all was about getting attention from you. I mean, we're getting email fundraisers from him as he's doing it. Join in quickly. That's not governing. That's not becoming of a member of Congress. Now that the House Speaker's gavel is officially up for grabs, what happens next? There are rules in place that govern this process, as laid out in the House's governing procedures and the U.S. Constitution. Abby Larico explains what you need to know about the next steps to electing a Speaker. No, there's no automatic replacement for the Speaker. The U.S. Constitution outlines, quote, the House of Representatives shall choose their Speaker and other officers and leaves it at that. So for now, North Carolina Representative Patrick McHenry is the acting Speaker, handpicked for the job by McCarthy himself, as per House rules. And his main function in that role is to lead the House toward voting for a permanent pick for the job. No, you don't have to be a member of the majority party or even of the House of Representatives to be named Speaker of the House, but that's usually how it works. This guide on House procedures says while the Speaker doesn't have to be chosen from the current membership, quote, the practice has been followed invariably. No, a candidate doesn't need a majority of House members to select them for the role, just a majority of those voting. So while a majority would require 218 of the 435 members to select a candidate, the Congressional Research Service explains that threshold is lowered if not everyone votes. You may remember from the beginning of McCarthy's tenure earlier this year, ballots will keep coming until a majority consensus is reached among those voting. And no, the House really can't do its job as usual without a speaker. That means everything from swearing in new members to moving forward on legislative duties, such as passing spending bills that could avoid a government shutdown. That could once again be looming, with just a short-term spending bill keeping things going through November 17th. Now let's take a closer look at the short-term deal made to avert a government shutdown. The crisis was averted after a last-minute compromise, which Representative Gates pointed to as the reason to oust McCarthy. The deal relied on Democratic help and abandoned deep spending cuts. Connor Board explains what is included and what was left out of the temporary spending bill. On the House floor, 
We passed by overwhelming numbers the ability to keep government open for the next six weeks. Just hours before what would have been a shutdown of the federal government, Republican Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy brought a 45-day spending bill to the table, allowing more time for Congress to come to a deal on funding. The temporary spending bill surprised some Democrats and frustrated some fellow Republicans who wanted spending cuts and new policies for the border included. But if there's one thing you should start understanding, not just that I'll never give up, but I'm a type of conservative that wants to get things done. It's easy to be a conservative that wants to do nothing. The spending bill was then passed by the Senate with just three hours to spare, preventing a shutdown that Senator Patty Murray says would have hurt the more than 116,000 military personnel and federal workers in Washington state, as they would have had to go without pay. After the vote, Senator Murray called for bipartisan legislation to be approved in the coming weeks. If there is one lesson for House Republicans to take from the absolute chaos they have caused this past week, it is that partisanship is not a path forward, it's a path to chaos. While the spending bill added more money for federal disaster assistance, it does not have funding for Ukraine, something Senator Murray was hoping to see when she spoke about the potential shutdown yesterday. Critical funding for Ukraine right now at a critical point uh, to get them through the next few weeks. Now Congress has more time to debate legislation so that hopefully the threat of a potential government shutdown does not come again in 45 days. Making sure federal workers get paid and that programs continue is something the White House says is imperative. Congress, one of Congress' basic, basic duties is to keep the government open and make sure critical key programs that Americans need across the country are funded and continue. The short-term bill was meant to give lawmakers time to act and give families more time to prepare for the potential consequences of government shutdown if that ends up happening. Ann Sparacco spoke with an economics expert on advice for those whose jobs would be paused during a shutdown. As postcard families, we've kind of mentally prepared ourselves year after year. Christino Shields is no stranger to pivoting amid a government shutdown. It really does put families in a, it's in a harder situation. With a husband in the U.S. Coast Guard bringing in the only income and three children to feed, the Glosser family is preparing to go through some financial strains as congressional leaders play tug of war over the 2024 spending bill. It's really frustrating that year after year, this is something we have to face, that we're constantly thinking to ourselves, are we gonna have a paycheck coming in? First thing they can do is not panic. Rick Chakraborty with Christopher Newport University says this will impact military families like O'Shields and others who depend on federal funding. But he says having enough money to cover at least a month's worth of expenses should help create that safety net. It really is about smart budgeting. No matter what you earn, try and create a, an emergency fund. As long as you can survive a month without pay, you have a good cushion. O'Shield says it's not easy to save up that much money, but they'll work on a tight budget as they wait for lawmakers to reach a permanent deal. And if no resolution comes, guess what? We kind of sort of know how to cope in the situation. Representative McCarthy's removal as speaker after 269 days on the job raises multiple questions about who will take his spot and how the House will resume its normal duties. We'll keep an eye on the updates as we continue to learn more. Thank you for watching this edition of In the News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney.